Hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up everything in Noki Bay. We had a fun time there and I discovered that I liked the level more than I thought. This episode, we're dealing with this horrible frame rate. Darn, I was just about to ride that Yoshi too. So yeah, now we've got Yoshis in Delfino Plaza. Uh, this one wants a banana, so we're going to head on over. This entire street right here has a ton, and I mean a ton of different fruits, so pretty much anyone that you'd ever need, just come over here and grab one. Hey, I actually threw the fruit at that at the Yoshi that time. One fun detail about uh, Yoshi is that whenever you ride on top of him, uh, more drums are added to the music. We can't really hear it that well because, again, this frame rate is just not that great. But anyways, with Yoshi, you just want to use him to eat that pineapple and then hop right in. Serena Beach, Episode 1, The Manta Storm. So yeah, previously I was talking about how, in a previous episode I talked about how I wanted to do this level after Noki Bay because this takes make takes place uh, during the sunset. And, you know, putting aside anything that I think about this level, it really does, this sunset really does look pretty. Uh, there's a Pina Park over there. And it was this guy right here. Oh please, tell me my nightmare is over. You can save me. I don't know why, but you just look very capable to me. Listen, it all started around noon. This giant mantis-shaped thing showed up, and it was paper thin, floating. It was a paper. It was this paper thin floating silhouette. It came and covered the hotel grounds in this electric goop. Then, oh, the horror! My beautiful hotel, my poor building. It sank in the middle of that awful ooze. Why me? Why? Now I've just got the staff cleaning up, but where's my hotel? What am I supposed to do? I, I just can't sit back and. Uh, I. It's back. That's cost my goal. Do something. Our next boss fight is the Manta Ray. What he is, is this ghoul that appears on the ground, and uh, once you spray him with water by using the hover nozzle or just by using the regular nozzle, he'll split off into two different Manta Rays, and he'll keep doing this over and over until he gets incredibly tiny. And once you spray those incredibly tiny Manta Rays, then uh, he will finally go down. So just use the spam spray as well as uh, as well as the hover nozzle in order to spray a bunch of the different manta rays. And once you run out of water, just head back over onto the beach here. This is probably the area you want to be at the most, just because you know you get free water refill. And if you, I'm pretty sure if you run far enough into the beach, then the manta rays won't be able to attack you. Now they're all after you, but where? Once you've made it so that all of the manta rays are very small, then they'll start actually going after you. But just do what you were doing before, stand in the beach and spray, and you should do good. Got a refill here. There are a ton of these things. And I know that for some people this boss fight can be quite frustrating, so don't worry if it takes you one or two tries to actually get it down. Alright, once you've destroyed all of the different manta rays, you can do a triple jump right over here, or just any sort of jump, I don't know why I specified a triple jump, and get Shine 37.
So Shadow Mario has an interesting device over there. I mentioned something about that device in uh, episode one of the series. And that's actually something that I'm going to get to a little later, probably uh, in the next episode, because I think we're required to go get that for the next episode. So yeah, episode two, the lo hotel lobby secret. Now that the hotel is back up, you're going to be spending most of your time here. I think there's one more mission that's out here on the beach. Most of it is spent in this hotel. Hey, um, it's Mario, right? Yeah, Mario. Listen, I uh, have a feeling that you can help me out again. See, the hotel, it's, uh, it's, full of, it's full of ghosts. So, well, could you maybe just... Look, come inside, please. I can tell you're a miracle worker. Don't be so modest. Alrighty, so inside are a bunch of booze. Uh, thankfully, though, as we've seen on this channel, we're capable of, he of uh, dealing with a cramped uh, building full of booze. So these pink booze are platform booze. I don't know if that's their official name, but that's what I'm going to call them. And when you spray them, they turn into pink platforms. I missed that platform twice. I suck. Alright, now that I've decided to be competent and get back up here... You just want to sort of make a staircase of sorts and get all the way to this top floor and jump right into the mouth of this boo. Another secret mission. And this one... Oh god. If there's any level that's going to raise the death counter up by a ton, it's this one. There's just a lot about this level that annoys me. And there's one very specific part that'll probably cause more deaths than any. So yeah, just make your way up here. Do spin jumps if you can to make your way across, or if you need to use the enemies to jump across. Uh, continuously do... Is that the sound of those guys' wings flapping? Because that's a very weird sound. Uh, just wall jump your way, hit those brick blocks. The sand can be a bit annoying because it immediately starts falling and you have to make your way across very quickly without any breaks. This. This one area is probably going to at least cause a few deaths. Okay, I can't, can't ground pound through that. So I guess I just have to jump down here. This spinning cogwheel, I guess is the best way to describe it, has the some of the worst physics in the entire game. Gonna try to jump to make my way across. Gonna spin jump. Oh, I've, if I had just made that spin jump, I would have made it. Gosh, and now that cogwheel is probably going to kill me a bunch of times. I was very surprised that I was able to make it across in one try. But now, knowing my luck, that's just going to be the worst for me. My, my one problem there was my hesitation. Because I got down to the sand part, and I bet if I had just kept going and jumping, then I probably would have made it. But I was like, you know what, I should probably take a second here, pause, and... Uh, then I can just spin jump and get across because that's a really trusty move and it and it is but the problem came because I was an absolute dolt and Wasn't able to do it at all in time So we're making our way across here back here now I'm Gonna turn this camera around and make sure that it's at a good angle Oh, thank god, that only took me one death. I swear, I got, like, multiple game overs on my first time recording that. 
Oh, thank God. Episode 3, Mysterious Hotel Delfino. I think this is going to be another Peanut Park situation where we're going to see the same opening cutscene a couple of times, so I'll just skip by that in order to uh, make sure that I'm not wasting too much time just seeing stuff that we've already seen before. Ah, oh, Mario! Dear Mario, please come right in. Do I sense some reluctance? Come now, don't dawdle. Even Mario knows that last level sucked. Anyways, if that last level didn't make me dislike this entire world, this level certainly will. First thing we need to do is get this Yoshi ready. It needs a pineapple. And the only way to do that is to first head into this restroom. You see this weird pile of goo, this like slime on the wall here? If you do a flip up here, that'll lead to a completely different hotel room. Uh, right here, this painting, the way that the land is shaped and the trees are shaped makes it look like a boo. And if you spray it a bit, sure enough, a boo will appear. And that allows us to jump through. We're going to do something pretty similar over here, where we need to spray the doors of this uh, closet. Sometimes when you spray something that needs to be spun around, it can be pretty finicky and it starts spinning around a bunch of times at like mock speed, so... You'll have to deal with that. More platform boos. Jump into the ceiling. Spray this shelf right here, that'll allow you access to this side room over here. Ground pound. And grab this pineapple from the box. Now, open this door with a pineapple. Jump on down. Now with Yoshi, Make sure you know where you're going here, because if you get stuck in a room and can't get Yoshi out of it, then you'll either have to wait a very long time for Yoshi to have all of his juices depleted and make him disappear. It's a very weird sentence, I know. Uh, or uh, you'll have to restart the level, which I had to do a ton uh, during my first recording. I think I did it like three times in total. Anyways, to brighten our spirits a little bit, get it, because ghosts. Uh, all these ghosts are causing such trouble, they're everywhere. Why can't someone come along and suck them up with a vacuum? What, why are you looking at me like that? Fun little Luigi's Mansion reference right there. Anyways, now we need to go around and kill a bunch of different boos, and eventually, no, not this room again. I've seen this room too many times, because you have to keep going in here to get the pineapple. You are able to, thanks to Yoshi's magnificent jump, able to spin jump right on out of there. Uh, but we're looking for one ground poundable area. I think it's that one right over there. Oh. So yeah, just keep traversing through this labyrinth up here. I don't know why there's a labyrinth in the ventilation system of this hotel. Does this count as like a ventilation system? Because it's a very tall ventilation system, if that's the case. This isn't the right spot. Alright, it's probably gonna be the last place that I check. Uh... You... It's gonna be right over here, isn't it? Because I'm pretty sure that's the only possible spot it could be in. It takes a very long way around here. Yep, sure enough, last place I check. But anyways, we get this cute little scene of Mario grabbing a shine sprite wall on Yoshi. Ah. Serena Beach Episode 4, The Secret of Casino Delfino. This level is similar to... I've mentioned this before, but I have three levels in this game that I absolutely despise. One of them is this uh, mission where, just to quickly explain, you have to get red coins, and thankfully this mission is unnecessary to actually just beating the game, but you have to get uh, eight red coins while on this lily pad going down this uh, one spot, and you need to make sure you get them all in one go as the lily pad is uh, moving uh, down the river, and if you don't, uh, then you have to start the uh, level all over. Uh, but you can't just like start it over, you have to go back outside 
uh, to Delfino Plaza. And the reason that's a big issue is because actually getting to this level is hell. Because in order to do this, you need to, like, jump on a boat and wait, like, I want to say, like, five minutes just waiting to get to that, uh, just to get over to the level. And I think that's something that, uh... This, uh, one mission here suffers from two. Well now, Mario, you should drop by the casino. I'll let my boys know you're coming. Go on now. Uh, I think this level suffers from an issue that, uh, that level suffers from as well. That they'll have, uh, missions that are just annoying. But the big problem... Oh, Mario, right this way, please. Uh, comes from the fact that you have to do a bunch of stuff just to have the opportunity to retry it again because I assure you that the lily pad level that I'm thinking of it wouldn't be as annoying if you were able to just quickly restart uh, from the beginning of that level but no you have to wait like five minutes and like there you do have to do a bit of platforming so god forbid you fail the platforming and have to start the process over again just to get to that level anyways we have to Make it so that these slots get over to sevens. Once you've done that, you want to do the same exact thing over here. Instead, instead of, like, individually spinning each slot, this works like an actual slot machine where you spin everything and you wait for it to stop. Just my luck that I got the absolute worst one. And you just have to do a lot of waiting here just to get to the for just to actually get the sevens thankfully that works pretty quickly now here's a really annoying section uh you have to flip over these uh panels right here to get a shine sprite to form uh and the problem with this is that uh first of all it can be a bit finicky. Second of all, when Flood sprays water, it has, like, I don't want to say realistic physics, but all of the water that that is, like, spraying everywhere isn't just for show. It's not like all of the water is just going in one straight line. There's water splashing about in different areas, and that'll hit other panels, which can cause a bit of an issue. Uh, because it'll flip over panels that you already dealt with, like that right there. Oh, thank god! Okay, now to get to the... Now to get to the next annoying section, now it's time for the actual level! Just seeing the opening cutscene just reminded me of how annoying this can be. So you've got all of these cubes moving about, and they're definitely going to push you off if this is your first time playing through the level. So, figure out the different paths that each of the uh, cubes have. Because once you figure out how each one moves and where each one is going, it's very easy to formulate a path to get across unscathed. You have each of these blocks of wood which are moving in and out of the walls. Then you have these like long uh, rectangular prism cubes that are just messing with you. And then this, this can absolutely mess with you because it's moving in a bunch of different weird directions and just pray that you don't slip off. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with it anymore. Shine number 40. Serena Beach Episode 5, King Boo down below. So the, uh, the King Boo, uh, or the Luigi's Mansion references of earlier weren't just like a funny reference. We're actually gonna get to see King Boo, kinda. It's not the real King Boo, it's more of just a 
goo monster made from the paintbrush that kind of looks like King Boo. But you know, it's still cool. Hurrah, Mario, Mario, the casino's this way. Well, actually, I must admit that unfortunately the casino's closed today. You see, there are creepy sounds coming from the basement. Could we trick you, I mean, ask you for your help? Oh, thank you. So we want to make our way back to the casino. By the way, if you try to go, go to the casino before uh, the previous mission, it'll just say, sorry, uh, I forget the exact words, but it'll basically just say, sorry, we're out of service. By the way, I'm pretty sure this music is reused for Luigi's, uh, for Luigi's minigames from Mario 64 DS. Anyways, you'll notice that there's one uh, purple spot here on the roulette that's not anywhere else on the roulette. If we ground pound there, We'll be brought to the arena. <laughs> this is King Boo! So to deal with him, you want to go ahead and stop the, uh... By ground pounding on the purple spots on the roulette, you can stop them from moving. It's not necessary, but it's helpful. You want to spray King Boo, and uh, his slots will land on one of a few, one of like three or four things. Uh, if it lands on the fruits, that's good. If it lands on the pineapple, that's good. Uh, what you need to do then is throw a pepper at him, and then once he's uh, once you set his tongue on fire, you want to throw another fruit at him. I failed a couple times there, and that actually kind of freaked me out, because this boss fight can take a long time, depending on how lucky you are. Okay, no, I'm not lucky this time. I think you have to deal with a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of weird enemies here. We have uh, Strollin' Stews, Bloopers, and uh, Spoinks? Is that what they're called? Uh, Poink, that's what it's called. Uh... I think Spoink is the name of, like, a Pokemon or something like that. Come on, King Boo. Oh, is it because I haven't dealt with the Poinks yet? Okay. There we go. I got two of those purple things in one. That's pretty nice. Anyways, we get it spinning again. Come on. There we go. Very nice. I forget if it's predetermined or not. There we go, very nice. You can't pick up another pepper, by the way, it immediately vanishes. I know that some of these sound effects are from somewhere. I forget if they're from Luigi's Mansion, though. We have these bubbles here, which I don't remember being a thing. They don't do much, it seems. So just spray King Boo again and... Hey, there we go, there's the pineapples again. So come on, get the pepper. Ah, oh, come on. I don't want to deal with these bubbles. Oh, gosh dang it, these stupid... There we go. Don't have a pepper here, so just have to wait for the fruit to, to despawn. Okay, that's very disappointing. More of these guys. I forget what the fish are called. Looking poinks. I remember really liking this boss fight, but I think it was probably just because when I was a kid I was like, Oh, King Boo! And didn't really think much about what I was playing. Or at least my opinions have changed since then. Uh, one thing that I... Uh, speaking of things that I don't really like, one thing that uh, annoys me about, like, when people talk about media and stuff like that on the internet... Oh, come on! Uh, one thing that uh, quite annoys me about uh, discussion with uh, media, all types of media, like 
you know, games, movies, books, anything like that, is when people misuse the term objectively. Because, <sighs> you know, objective means that something is a fact, like a provable fact. But a lot of people I've seen when it comes to media just use it to mean my opinion that I think is better than yours. Which is very annoying. It's one of those things that, like, it's, I'd say it's like a pet peeve of mine where whenever I hear someone, like, say, like, this is an objectively bad game or an objectively good game, that's one of the things that, like, when I hear that in, like, a video essay or something like that, I always, like, get quite annoyed with it and usually just turn it off after that. Just because it seems like... I don't know how to describe it, but I guess I described it best when I say when I said that uh, it makes it seem like you're just trying to pass off your opinion as better than everyone else's. Like this is the objective one, and if you have a different opinion, then you're objectively incorrect. It just is quite annoying. Okay, there finally. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, you know, saying objective just feels really weird. Because like I said, objective means like a provable fact. Uh, and subjective means opinion. So something can't really be subjectively, or nothing can really be objectively good. Um, because something being good isn't something that's like, provable something being good is usually like based off of like criteria of what a person wants in a video game and that can change from person to person and when something can change from person to person it's not really a fact episode 6 scrubbing serena beach Mario, we've got trouble. That electric goop is back. Where? Everywhere. So yeah, now you've got to go around, spray all of the different goop, and the different bits of goop, and just try to get as much as you can before the three minute time limit, three minute time limit is over. That's kind of hard to say, three minute time limit. Oh, out of water. So recently, a lot of uh, things that I like have um, got have been getting either remakes or remasters. Like a remaster, for example, Ghost Trick recently got that. Uh, and by the way, uh, if you're watching this and you have not played Ghost Trick. Go buy the remaster. It is an incredible game. If you like, uh, you know, mystery novels and mystery games, then you will probably love it. It's all about puzzles and stuff like that. It has a lovable cast of characters, a very intriguing mystery that's very well written. It's written by the same guy who made the first four Ace Attorney games as well as the Great Ace Attorney uh, duology, or the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, I should probably say. That's the name of the uh, collection. Uh, but also, uh, speaking of Ace Attorney, the Apollo Justice Trilogy is getting a remaster. It's kind of funny that it's the Apollo Justice Trilogy when two out of the three games there are Phoenix Wright games, or named after Phoenix Wright. Uh, wow, that was great. I never expected you to do it so easily. Fantastic, Mario. Serena Beach Episode 7, Shadow Mario Checks In. But 
But back on that topic, uh, Mario RPG is getting a remake, which I am super pumped for. I never finished that game, but I really enjoyed what I did play, and it of course led to the creation of the Paper Mario games, which I absolutely love. Ah, uh, Mario, there's a troublemaker inside who looks exactly like you. Hurry, get in there. And uh, Persona 3 is getting a remake, which I am super excited for. Um, by the way, Shadow Mario in this uh, does something really cool where he creates uh, fake like duplicates of himself that turn out to be booze. So that's that's actually pretty sweet. Uh, Persona 3 is getting a remake, which is awesome because I wanted to let's play Persona 3 Fess. Uh, you're so annoying. But uh, I'm excited for Reload because that is going to be filled with so many quality of life changes and, uh, you know, it's going to be much more stylized. The camera's in the wall right there. And it makes me super pumped because I also want there to be remakes for uh, Persona 1 and the Persona 2 duology. Persona, the, the Persona 2 duology because they deserve it because those are awesome games uh, and more people deserve to play them. And Persona 1, because I really do not like that game, and I'm hoping that uh, it, that Atlas can remake it and turn it into a game that I'll actually enjoy. Uh, but yeah, that is it for Serena Beach. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're going to head to the final world already. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye